Modern humans evolved in Africa. Somewhere around 60 to 70,000 years ago, it is hypothesized there was a migration from the Horn of Africa across the Red Sea and into southern Arabia. From there, the path followed the southern coast, eventually leading its migrants into Southeast Asia and Australia, as well as expanding north into Eurasia. This migratory walking path is approximately 450 miles long. Originating in eastern Ethiopia, the path follows the route proposed by Field and Lahr up until it reaches the Red Sea. This path then diverges from their proposed route and crosses the Red Sea at the Straits of Bab al-Mandeb. The 450-mile journey on foot would have been a long and arduous crossing. Much research has focused on reconstructing this journey, with the idea that climactic changes may have played a part. 60 to 70,000 years ago, during the Pleistocene, the Earth was in a glacial period, characterized by cooler global temperatures. During glacial periods, humans living in tropical regions had to contend with increasingly arid conditions. As aridity increased, the forests shrank and the savannas and deserts expanded. Inland environments began to deteriorate, but the coasts still offered a dependable supply of resources. Dry glacial periods may have prompted early migrations out of Africa, as humans sought out more favorable living conditions in coastal oases. Walking this path from eastern Ethiopia, humans would have had many geologic and climactic obstacles, including the Great Rift Valley and the Donegal Desert. The Rift Valley splits the central Ethiopian plateau. Climate is temperate in the highlands and hot and arid in the lowlands. Navigating the Donakil and Rift Valley on foot would have meant a lot of ups and downs for travelers, with elevations ranging from over 4,000 feet at the highest peaks to below sea level in the Donakil Depression. Part of the Great Rift Valley system, the Donakil Desert and the Donakil Depression is more than 300 feet below sea level. The Donakil Desert is a beautiful but volatile place, characterized by black lava formations, hot springs, sulfur fields, and smoking volcanic cones. It is one of the hottest places on Earth. Daytime temperatures average around 81 degrees Fahrenheit with highs reaching 122 degrees Fahrenheit.
After successfully crossing the land, travelers would then be faced with crossing the Red Sea. The Bab al-Mandab Strait is the narrowest part of the Red Sea that separates the Horn of Africa from the Arabian Peninsula. The Arabic phrase Bab al-Mandab literally means the Gate of Tears. Looking across the Bab al-Mandab Strait, you can see the Yemeni coast on the Arabian side of the Red Sea. When humans stood at water's edge 60,000 years ago, they too would have seen a vast stretch of coast on the far side of the sea. There has never been a land bridge in this region between Africa and Arabia. By comparing global sea level changes over time with measurements from the floor of the Red Sea, researchers have determined that Africa and Arabia have always been separated by water, at least for the last two million years. Today, at its narrowest point, the Bab al-Mandeb Strait is 18 kilometers across, and its shallowest point is 50 meters deep. However, during glacial maxima, sea levels would have been much lower, making the strait shorter and shallower. 60 to 70,000 years ago, the Bab al-Mandeb Strait would have been approximately 11 kilometers across and 17 meters deep. From November to June, there is a rapid southern flowing current known as the Hindi Current. The fast flowing Hindi Current pushes the waters of the Red Sea out into the Indian Ocean. Between June and October, the Shami Current pushes the waters of the Red Sea in the opposite direction, north. Navigating the strait during the Shami season would have been much safer for early humans attempting to cross the Red Sea. As sea levels have changed over the millennia, so have the coastlines. If humans migrating to Arabia via the Red Sea established coastal communities on the Arabian Peninsula, much of the archaeological evidence of those ancient coastal communities would now rest on the bottom of the Red Sea. As the number of proponents for a southern dispersal out of Africa continues to grow, so does the quest for evidence. So far, evidence for a southern dispersal has been rare, but paleoanthropology is finding clues in stone tools and fossils, and anthropological genetics is finding evidence by studying the mitochondrial DNA of human fossils and living individuals.